You know what the problem is? Most of you watching this and me, we're not professional video editors or colorists. No, we are creators, solo filmmakers, one man bands, whatever you want to call it. And so video editing and color grading is just a part of our daily workload. And also our editing workflow probably looks very different compared to the workflow of a professional video editor or colorist. So what we need is versatility and that's what the Toolbox is all about. It's a tool not just for video editors or just for colorists, it's a tool for creators. And also an all-in-one editing and color grading solution for DaVinci Resolve. So let me show you how it works, how I've been using it in my workflow and how it's different compared to the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor and Color Panel. Because yeah, I also made a video about those two a while back and they're great. But one of the big problems for a lot of you, and I agree, one of the big problems is that you can't remap the keys on those devices. So they're designed to do a very specific task, video editing, traditional video editing. And the Toolbox is a similar device, but completely different at the same time. And a quick thank you to Toolbox for sending me one to try out. I've been using it now for three, four weeks. So the same amount of time I spent with the speed editor and the color panel before making a video. Okay, anyway, so it's also a controller that can be used for video editing, but it's a lot smaller than the speed editor or the color panel. And you can also use it for a lot of other things like photo editing, digital painting, and even 3D modeling because it's highly customizable. It supports a bunch of Adobe programs, but also DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, Capture One, and many more. And the one I have here is the Torbox Elite Plus. Also works on iPad, by the way. Now, there are a lot of reasons why people use a device like this, right? Some people use it because it helps them to edit faster. Some people use it because they feel like it streamlines and smoothens their workflow. And I like devices like this because I like the combination of wheels and buttons. I don't know, it just feels nice. It makes, for me at least, it makes the boring tasks of the editing process more enjoyable and more fun. It doesn't really speed up my workflow, but everything becomes more enjoyable. And that's the main reason why I like devices like this. But let me just show you how I've been using it and why the Toolbox, for my personal workflow at least, is a better match than the speed editor. Look, a big part of my editing process for most of the videos I make is always the same, right? I have my talking head video clip, super long, and then the first thing I always have to do is cut out all the things I don't need. Silences, mistakes, everything, which is a lot. So I always have to go from this to this. And look, with my mouse and keyboard, I would use the mouse to navigate, space bar to play and stop. And then I have three super important shortcuts, the main shortcuts that I use, that I map to the A, S and D key. A is trim start to playhead, S is trim end to playhead, and D is just a cut, making a cut. And so usually it goes navigate with the mouse, make a cut, then spacebar to play the clip to see where the part is that I need, then go back a little bit, with start and stop, and then trim start to playhead. And that over and over again, like a hundred times. And for that part, I really like the speed editor because I really, really like that jog wheel to, you know, navigate the timeline and to move the playhead. But the problem was that I wasn't able to translate how I did it on my keyboard, all those shortcuts, directly to the speed editor because there's no ripple trim start to playhead key and you cannot remap the keys. So I had to find a workaround with ripple delete. And also the speed editor is designed for editing in the cut page and not the edit page. And so, yeah, it took me a while to get used to it. Eventually I did and it was great. But with the tour box, because it's so versatile and highly customizable, I was able to like map all the shortcuts that I was using on my keyboard directly to the tour box, to all the buttons and dials. And so right now I have it set up like this. This button is ripple trim start to playhead. This one is end to playhead. The dial I use to move the playhead frame by frame. And then this button is play and stop, so space bar. And the wheel I use to move the playhead faster. Either one second jumps or clip to clip. And they also have a new feature that I'm starting to like more and more, shuttle playback. So if you assign that function to the wheel, for example, you can control the playback and playback speeds. See? It's pretty cool. And I really like it that 
With the tour box, I can use my left hand to do everything on the tour box and I use my right hand on the mouse. Because with the speed editor, you actually need both hands on the speed editor, but I still always use my mouse. And so yeah, I like this combination, tour box, mouse. Now, I have to say, while the dials and the, the wheel on the tour box, they feel really nice, right? They also have haptic feedback, so they click if you want. You can turn it off also. But the jog wheel on the speed editor, that heavy hockey puck feeling, you know, it's just so smooth. It just feels like a tiny bit better. But then the overall experience, well, I have to say, for my personal workflow, the tour box wins. I didn't need a few weeks to get used to it. And that's because, yeah, like I said, I'm not a professional video editor, I'm a creator. I have a very specific creator workflow, I guess. If a real editor would see how I edit videos, they would probably laugh their asses off, right? And your workflow probably looks completely different compared to mine. And that's why this thing works for creators. Yeah, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Because look, all these tools are great. Speed editor, color panel, tour box. They're just different. They're designed for different people, different workflows. So it's a matter of finding the one that works for you. And you know, some people don't like using these devices and that's fine too, of course. Okay, anyway, now lots of creators have been using the tour box for editing in DaVinci Resolve for, I don't know, years probably? But mainly for video editing and not color grading. But they've added a few new features now and you can actually use it for color grading now. So when this feature is enabled, hover adjust and you go to the color wheels in the color page, all you have to do is hover over one of the wheels with your mouse and then you'll see these indicators, which means that that wheel is active. And then you can control that color wheel by using the dial and the scroll wheel, see? And it allows you to do some real fine adjustments, similar to the track balls on the color panel. Now, I do have to say that the track balls on the color panel, they feel a bit more intuitive, so it's easier to get used to them. With the tour box, you have to combine the dial and the scroll wheel, so it's two things. It takes a little bit longer to get used to it, but not that long. After a week or so, I was used to it. But if you're looking for something for just color grading, the color panel is a better option, of course. And by the way, you can also do the same in the inspector window. So when you enable the mouse drag simulation feature and then hover over a setting in the inspector window, for example, you can adjust it with a dial. And because there's that haptic feedback, you can make real fine adjustments more easily than when actually dragging the mouse left and right. It's a really cool feature. But yeah, look, I'm only using like 10% of the capabilities of this thing. And that's the main difference compared to the speed editor. The versatility and customizability of this thing is incredible. The speed editor and color panel, they're great too, excellent even. But they like push you gently into a professional, traditional workflow. You know what I mean? So in the end, it shouldn't really be a difficult decision if you're like still in doubt between the speed editor and tour box. All you have to do is look at your workflow. What's your daily workload, your editing process? And that should give you the answer. Uh, I hope it helps. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.